prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, Help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known turn our wish worship into witness in the sacrament of life send us forth to love and serve you bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to forgive as you forgave. May we still be hold your image in the world you died to save. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are celebrating the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ also called Corpus Christi. In this Holy Mass, I have invited a few volunteers because we need to test what we need to do when we will open the church. I call this a dry run. And then hopefully that we will give you an idea of how we are going to proceed as a community when it is time for the church to reopen. In this Holy Mass, we pray once again for all parishioners, relatives, and friends throughout the world. We also pray for medical professionals and volunteers, for all those who are sick, especially those who have contracted COVID-19. We pray for our beloved dead, especially Romolo Bugayan Sr. and uh, Rihanna Stevens, sister-in-law of Narciso, sister of Eva. And so to prepare ourselves, let us again be truly sorry for our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness and a red wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to psalm is, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He declares his word to Jacob, his status and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The people then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading today, God foreshadowed the gift of his body and blood by the lesser gift of manna to feed the Israelites in the desert. Moses reminded the people toward the end of their journey, that the gift of manna was given to them not just to feed their bodies, but to remind them of several things. First, through their 40-year journey in the desert, God directed their journey to test whether they would keep his commandments and thus enter into the promised land. Number two, they were to remember that bread is important to live physically But God's word and obedience to it is necessary to live eternally. And number three, they were not to forget what God has done for them. Now, what is the application for us? Brothers and sisters, our life journey is to test our acceptance and commitment to God. This will determine whether we will be with God or not, in eternity. This test is based on the acceptance of and the embracing of the word of God as our way of life. And finally, like the Israelites, this realization that we must not forget what God has done for us must be recalled in mind and celebrated in thanksgiving. And then in the second reading, The bread and wine are changed, transformed radically and substantially into the body and blood of Christ. So when we partake, we partake not in bread and wine, but the very body and blood of Christ. Our oneness with Christ in the Eucharist also signifies our oneness, our unity, with each other because of the Eucharist. But how conscious are we of each of these reality? 
God dwells in I, and I in God. God dwells in you, and you dwell with God. So what is happening after communion during those moments of intimacy with Jesus? How conscious are we of this presence and oneness with God when it's time to leave the church? Because it is the same Jesus in me as in you. By his presence, we are united as brothers and sisters. So how can I choose to sin against another if I am conscious of this mystery? How can I choose to say or think negative against another who also received Jesus in Eucharist? What is our disposition after communion? The focus of the gospel message today is that to eat the body and blood of Christ is not a symbolic gesture. In faith, we are consuming the real body and blood of Jesus. To eat his body is to have eternal life. How much clearer can Jesus be unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you will not have eternal life. He is talking about an internal, invisible reality. So we must approach in awe and wonder and celebrate in thanksgiving the love of God shown us in such marvelous ways. Let us all stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When we rely only on our resources, we feel hungry. But when we live a Eucharistic life, relying on the grace of God, we have so much we wish to share. Let us pray for the hungry among us for a fuller sharing in the new covenant that we may be bonded in deeper unity with god and one another as we share in the communion of his body and blood we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for all who cannot receive the eucharist that we as body of christ may be god's love and nurturing compassion for them through our prayer and concern we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hunger for deeper meaning and truth, that they may be drawn to Christ by our witness and find in him their heart's fulfillment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who lack food and nourishment that we may hear Christ's challenge to give them food and open hearts more fully to all who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater access to the Eucharist, that God will touch the hearts of many to serve the community of faith in the ministries of word and sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater reverence for the Eucharist, that we may approach the Eucharist with faith, reverence, and commitment to the dying and rising of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater spirit of openness and hospitality, that we may welcome all whom God sends our way and share with them the gifts which God has shared with us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bring the body of Christ to the homebound and hospitalized, that they may be renewed through their service and be a support and a source of joy for those whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, stay always close to us. Make us one with you and with each other. Let your love course through our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, 
we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures, heaven and earth, sing a new song of adoration, as and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Josephine Bakita and Magdalene of Canos, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm our in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Romulo Bugayon Sr. and Reina Stevis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. through Him, and with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. 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 Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to invite you to come and spend some quiet moment with our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament here in our church tomorrow starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon all the way to about 8 o'clock in the evening. We will, of course, monitor the number of people that will enter the building. We will make it sure that uh, uh, we do not exceed the 30% requirement and the six, per, six um, feet distance uh, that is also expected. Uh, there will be volunteers uh, at the, nar at the uh, Nartex, uh, who will be helping out to ensure that uh, uh, this social distancing is maintained as you spend your time with the Lord in prayer. We ask that you keep at least uh, an hour before the Blessed Sacrament or less in order that you may be able, that in order that uh, other parishioners will have a chance also to spend some quiet moment with the Lord. While I would like to see you stay here all day tomorrow. 
Uh, we have to be mindful that uh, we need to practice charity. And there are many of you who are so anxious to come back to church. And, um, and so we'll have to give everybody that opportunity, even just for a brief glimpse of the Lord uh, in the Eucharist. We have a change of uh, our weekend schedule uh, when we will start uh, our Masses uh, next week. And I have uh, asked permission and blessing of, his, of our regional bishop, uh, the Most Reverend John Boisano, to uh, change our schedule so as to uh, meet all the requirements necessary in order uh, to keep this church uh, clean and uh, disinfected, uh, and that we all remain healthy uh, throughout this pandemic. And so, uh, the new schedule for our Sunday Eucharist will be on Saturday evening. We call the Saturday Vigil Mass. We are going to have two Masses, one at four and the other at six. And then, uh, on Sunday, we're going to have 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, uh, no, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. There will be two hours in between uh, these Masses in order to enable people to leave the church and also for the volunteers to take over and, and clean or disinfect the church before the next group of parishioners uh, will come uh, for Holy Mass. Tonight, as you can see, I have a few people here in the church with me to celebrate this Mass. I don't envy them because after this Mass is over, they're going to clean and disinfect the church to see how long it takes uh, for us uh, to do that. So that when you come, those of you who are at home following this Mass, when you come, um, you, know, you will know that the church is fairly safe. So uh, hopefully that you will also be, uh, you will find in your heart uh, your a generosity of spirit and you will also step forward to help out uh, in the cleaning and the disinfecting uh, which will be required from all of us. So um, uh, I'm very grateful for our participants tonight because they have also uh, in a way illustrate for us what we would expect at the distribution of Holy Communion, which is very crucial uh, for all of us. As Catholics, the Eucharist is always the center of our lives, and receiving our Lord in His body, uh, the Eucharist, uh, is part of that celebration. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to please visit our parish website. Uh, there will be many information that, will, that you may want to know uh, pertinent to our reopening. I will be posting uh, as we go along because if I give you page and page and page of all the rules and regulations, you will, your head will swirl like I, do, I did for the last few days. Uh, and I don't want you to go through that uh, hassle, so we'll try to uh, simplify it for you, as, uh, and, uh, but we need time to do that. So uh, we would, I would like to ask for your patience and understanding as we go along. We pray that uh, we will be able to do this all together so that everybody will get a chance uh, to once again come and participate in the Mass. Our church, as you know, can accommodate 800 people in a normal uh, before pandemic uh, time, but uh, with all the requirements of social distancing, six feet and uh, uh, 30%, uh, we can only accommodate 175 people inside this church and another 50 uh, in the parish hall. And uh, that is the number of people that we will be able to accommodate for every Mass that uh, uh, we will celebrate. Of course, for those of you who have health concerns and or we may be uh, having um, doubts whether you should or should not come for Mass, uh, we will also continue to streamline all our Masses, and they will be available to you as the Mass are being celebrated. One of the uh, treasures that we have here in the church is that uh, we had the foresight from 
during the cons uh, con construction of this church to put on all uh, the wires necessary uh, in order uh, for us to be able to do this. Our camera may not be as great as, uh, as you can see, but uh, there is room for improvement. Uh, but at least uh, I am just grateful that we don't have to run wires on the floors of this church that are tripping hazard when you return. Everything is uh, actually just a push of a button and off we go online. So uh, there's much to be grateful for as we uh, look forward to the reopening of our churches. I may sound like this, but I'm really excited to welcome you all back to this church, and I hope that you're also as excited as I am to once again be able to celebrate the Mass. And so at this time, I'd like to invite all of you to please stand, and let us pray together uh, the, the prayer uh, that we always do uh, at the conclusion of each Mass uh, during this time of pandemic. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health soon, and protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who plead for your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, and before you we stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Our Lady of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Josephine Bakita, pray for us. Saint Magdalene of Canossa, Pray for us. Saint Anthony of Padua, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, pray for us. Saint Padre Pio, pray for us. Saint Pius X, pray for us. All you holy angels and archangels, pray for us. All you saints and martyrs of God, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And may the Lord God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, in heaven above and earth below. One God, three persons we adore and sing our praise forevermore. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above you, heavenly hosts. Praise
praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.